I have a microphone on and I call there when I start the class. These classes are, are recorded and they're recorded for a couple of reasons. First and foremost, I make them available to the people in my online section of the class. Um, that way, you know, why should you folks have all the fun of hearing the lectures? They get to hear them too. Um, that does work, uh, it, it does work, it is advantageous to you as well because if you have to miss a class for whatever reason, you can always, you can always go back and, and uh, watch the recording of it. So that's why that's a little bit different. Um, than, than some of your other classes, perhaps. Uh, what I'd like to do today is uh, go over some introductory material. Uh, some, of the, some of the items I'll probably just mention that we'll talk about later on in the course. Um, and I do want to uh, start talking about the first assignment that you have done and get into the material of the course as well. Um, let me start by taking attendance. Because of this, you will find that um, because of the way I, I handle the, the online versus the uh, on-campus class, you'll notice that uh, if you look at the listing of this class, they'll show a lot more people than are actually physically here. That's because uh, the online and the uh, campus section I have rolled up into one section on Angel. Um, I just, I think it's more convenient for everyone uh, to deal with it that way. So what I like to do is I like to start going around the room and introducing yourself. So if you want to begin over here. Gerard Stein. Mm-hmm. Do you want me to say anything else or just my name? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I'm from the Office of Student Success Management. I'm going to be talking about the All right, go ahead. So, I came from India. In India, I did master's in science, math, math and computer science. This and I'm interested in this. Okay, excellent. Go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, well. I hope hope you're feeling better. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. Okay. Excellent. Go ahead. Well, we'll we'll change your mind. <laughs> throughout the semester. <coughs> so, uh, next, Ralph. I'm Christian Ford. This is my second semester. Okay. I do a lot with Android and Linux. Okay. Excellent. Okay. All right, go ahead.
Okay. Okay. I <laughs> see. I'm paying attention. No, it's Rick Byro. Yeah. I'm. I'm here just uh, to round out some knowledge. All right. Yeah. Well, you know, you can't believe everything you hear. <laughs> right. Right. All right. Um. Are all of you, uh, have all of you used Angel in the past? Okay, if, you've, if you have not, then we can talk about it in lab. Angel is a course management system, so I don't like handout anything in class. All the handouts are available uh, in Angel. So uh, like your assignments, the syllabus, and that sort of thing. And I also use it to communicate with students between class. So what I'm going to do now is sort of give an overview, uh, not of how to use Angel, but of where the material is. Uh, in Angel. And again, if you've never used Angel uh, and have questions about it, we can review that in lab. Um, your screen will look a little bit different, again, given the fact that I'm an instructor in this class. Um, you know, I have, I have a, a different role. So when you log on, you will typically see something that looks like this with a list of your classes. Um, this class is actually the web section of the class. This will be disabled. So everyone, everyone, whether you're in the web class or the campus class, will go into the first one on here. When you click on that, most of the action is in the content tab. There will be course announcements. Um, you know, I announce things between classes. Um, sometimes there are unresolved questions in class. Someone might ask me a question I don't have an answer for. Or any number of things. If I would happen to know that I'm not going to be uh, in class a particular day, I would post the announcement as soon as possible. So it sort of pays you to check, uh, to log on and check the announcements um, periodically, you know, even, uh, you know, the days that we don't have class. Most of the stuff ha happens on the uh, content tab. Um, this is largely for the online students. This will sort of direct them to give themselves the same overview that I'm giving you here today. So we won't really look at that. Course information are some of the very basic um, handouts for this class and, and we'll go over those today. Week one, we'll probably come back to towards the end of class today. Because uh, each week will have its own folder pretty much. I may combine two weeks together um, on occasion, but um, there'll be pretty much a folder for every week and that will contain any assignments that are due as well as a description of what the activities are for that week. Resources, there's a whole mess of resources that I have uh, concerning web development and as I find new ones I put them in here. So we'll refer to these resources throughout the course. Not really going to look at them today unless, unless something comes up today relevant to one of them. Semester project. Um, you will have a semester project in this class, and this is a description of it. We have really um, a handful of documents for you to look at. We have a overview, which just sort of sets the stage for it. There is two parts of the project. There's a design, and then there's the final, uh, final project, um, you know, finalized and completed. The design you can think of as being like uh, an outline or a rough draft of what you're, what you're planning on doing. And then uh, the final project is, is the finished product. Um, and I have a sample plan um, because students in the past often were a little confused about what I expected uh, with the plan. So I created a little sample plan that we'll go over um, when we get to that point. We won't probably talk about this for uh, another couple weeks or so, um, but it would be a good idea if you read it first. So read through this so that you're familiar with it, so I can just spend some time hitting the highlights and I don't have to, to start at square one. So that would be one thing for you to do is be sure that you've read through the semester project um, section. I didn't want to click that. I wanted to go back to content. I have a discussion forum. It's a place for you to answer questions 
uh, uh, that your classmates have or ask questions of your own. Um, think of this uh, analogous to raising your hand and asking a question in class. And people that are in the web-based version of the class, they don't have the opportunity to do that in person. They can ask the questions in discussion forum. That way everyone can see the question, everyone can contribute to the answer, and everyone can see the answers that everyone gives. So if you have questions that you think uh, are relevant to, to more than yourself, by all means, post them to the discussion section. All right. Um, so. Course information we're going to go over now. Week one we'll go over towards the end of class. Resources we probably won't touch today. We'll just be referring back to that throughout the semester. Semester project, read through this as soon as you can. And then finally discussion forum is there if you need it. Let's start by looking at the syllabus. <clears throat> and I'm not one to um, read every word of the syllabus to you. I mean, if I was going to do that, why would I create a document? Um, instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of hit the highlights and leave you to read the rest of it. All right. The top part of the class is some information about the class and information about how to get a hold of me. One thing that we'll talk about in a couple minutes here is different ways to contact me. Um, this contains my email address and my phone number here on campus, uh, along with my office location. Might as well jump into that now, different ways of contact me. There is three of them. See me in person in my office during office hours. Um, give me a call at this number or send me an email. You can also email me through Angel. There's an email facility if you go through Communicate. You can send a message to someone. I've summarized in a separate document, separate from the syllabus, a list of different ways that you can communicate with me. And I won't read all of this, but we'll look at the chart. Um, the first one is primarily for the online students. Online students, I invite you to come in and sit in on this class if you want to. You know, if you're having trouble with a particular piece of material in this class or, or you're able to, just because you signed up for the online class, you're welcome to come in. The flip side of that is you folks get to view the videos if, if you're missing class. So sort of blurring the lines between the, the, the sections. I invite any of you that wants to, to come in and sit on, uh, sit in on one of my other classes' labs. All right? All the CISS courses consist of uh, a lecture part and a lab part. All right, so after this class, we go over to the lab and you have a, a chance to work on your assignments and projects and so on. All my other classes are like that as well. So what I've done is I've opened up these labs and I've said anyone from any of my classes can come to any of my labs. So you can come, you come to lab today if you continue to have issues with something or, you know, later on in the semester if you have difficulty, you're welcome to sit in on one of my other classes' labs. I have labs during the day and evening on Monday through Thursday. So, Monday through Thursday, each day I have a day lab and then I have an evening lab. So, the, you know, uh, should be able to accommodate you pretty much regardless of what your, what your schedule is, you know. Obviously, Monday and Wednesday, this is a day lab. Um, the lab that follows this class. But I also have a lab later on in the evening and I have a lab on Tuesday during the day and Tuesday and Thursday during the day and Tuesday and Thursday during the evening. So you're welcome to sit in on those. I'll probably at some point post details about where they are. Uh, if not, in the meantime, you can always ask me, you know, if you're having difficulty with stuff. Um, watch video recordings of the, the class. I mentioned that. Discussion board email within Angel, chat room within Angel. There isn't an ongoing chat room within Angel, but it is possible it, I could arrange uh, a chat if there's a, a group of students that want to discuss something. One thing that's difficult in an online class is, um, or, or even for you, between classes, let's say it's, it's Thursday and you're working on something. 
Sometimes if you run into difficulty, it sort of stops you in your tracks if you're having difficulty with the code. And therefore what I, uh, you know, and, and through email we can hash out a lot of those problems, but sometimes it's better if we're talking synchronously. So you can ask a question and I give you an immediate answer. So we can use online chat if we want to accomplish that, or we can discuss via the phone. It's generally better to send me email um, because I, I check my email more often than I check my phone's voicemail. All right. Office hours to be determined and uh, they'll be effective next week. So no office hours, no formal office hours this week uh, will be effective next week. Finally, if none of these options work for you, for whatever reason, contact me and we'll figure something out. All right. I try to give as many possible ways to get a hold of me and to contact me and to get your questions answered that I can. All right. uh, people have all kinds of different schedules. People have all kinds of other responsibilities in their life. And therefore, I think part of my job is to make me, myself, as available as I possibly can for, for you to, to answer questions. Obviously, especially those in the campus section, the lab is sort of the primary time for you to come in because that's designated primarily for this class and you can come in and get your questions answered. But occasionally problems extend beyond the lab and that's why these other means of communication are open for you. So, that's our little diversion here from the syllabus. All right. Here are some of the details of, of how to contact me. Description of the class. This is important. This really informs everything that we're doing here. This is why we're here. This is our goals for this class. All right. So it's a good idea to have these in the back of the mind, uh, back of your mind throughout the whole semester. Anything we do should relate one way or another to, um, to, to one of these goals. In fact, I think I say later on in the syllabus that if I'm talking about something and you don't understand how it relates to one of these goals, you're welcome to ask, to, to ask who cares. And I'll, I'll be glad to explain to you uh, why, it, why it does relate to one of these goals. Or I'll admit that I just got off on a tangent and forgot what class I was in or had a rough night or, or whatever. All right. Here's a textbook that we have for this class. You are also required, if you have not had a lab here on campus uh, yet, to have some sort of storage medium, media. So in other words, um, if you save something on a computer lab, it won't be there when you come back. Um, so you need to, to be sure that you take a copy with you. And again, most people have USB drives or you, know, you, can, you can save it on Angel actually, you can save it um, through other sort of cloud-based storage systems. You can email it to yourself, whatever you need to do. Just make sure you have a copy of your files where you live. And Angel will be used to communicate with students in the class and between classes. So again, I would uh, advise you to check a couple times throughout the week, you know, even when we don't have class, you know, uh, on the days between classes, just if I have any announcements. When we start getting assignments turned in, I will give you feedback via Angel. Um, and uh, as such, um, you know, it, it's best to check periodically so you get that feedback as soon as you can. The one thing that I would like to emphasize, by the way, is if you are working on an assignment and you have a problem, we have a Dropbox that you use to upload your, your completed project. All right. If you have a problem completing the project, it's best not to use the Dropbox to send me the question, but to send the question via email. The reason for that is the Dropbox I grade once a week when I get a chance to, whereas my email I check every day. So my email, if you send a question via email, you're, you're likely to get a, uh, a quicker response than if you upload a question in the Dropbox. This is your class. That's one thing to keep in mind, you know. Um, my job is to help each of you learn the material. And we are fortunate in, in the respect that this isn't that big of a class. Um, looking around, maybe 10, 12, 15, something like that. All right. 
It's not like a class where there's hundreds of people. Therefore, if you have questions, ask them. All right. Um, the absolute worst I will do will be to tell you, well, you know, that's a question that, that we're, we're better off discussing individually in lab. All right. Uh, but don't hesitate to ask the question regardless. Um, a lot of times, you know, the thought is, and, and the thing I've always heard is, if one student has a question, there's a good chance that other students have the same question. So you comprise a significant portion of this class in a small class of, of only 12 or so uh, in person. So if you have a question, um, there's a good chance there's a couple other people that might have that question too. In addition, there might be people sitting at home watching it online that have the same question. So by all means, if you have something that, that, you're, that you, you want to ask about, uh, please do uh, ask about it. And again, the absolute worst case scenario is if I consider it a little bit off topic or if I consider it something relating maybe just specifically to an issue that you're running into with your project, we can always defer it to lab. But ask away at any rate. Here's a list of college policies. You can read that on your own. Instructor policies, I'm really torn about late assignments because in the grand scheme of things, if you turn it in the day it's due or the day after, if you've learned the material, I'm happy. All right. On the other hand, though, what typically happens is people being people, you know, it's, tend to procrastinate at times and procrastination sort of snowballs in this class. In other words, if you're a little late on the first assignment, you're going to get a little late on the second assignment and then get a little later on the third assignment and so on. So therefore, I want to motivate you to get things done quickly. Um, as a result, I have a fairly flexible policy, but I do reserve the right to deduct if uh, there's late assignments. Um, part of whether I will and how much I will deduct relates to if we're working through a, a particular problem. So for example, if you're working on an assignment and you're in lab and you're asking me questions and you're emailing me between labs and you're a little bit late, I'm going to be a lot more open to not deducting than I would be if you simply don't show up for three weeks and sometime in the middle of September turn in lab one or something like that. All right. Um, so if you're having difficulty and we're working through it, lateness doesn't bother me that much. All right. Really, lateness bothers me when people are simply taking a very casual attitude and simply not turning stuff in at any point. Of course, by the end of the semester, we do have to have everything wrapped up. And if you're getting assignments in on time, that's a good little way to self-assess yourself and to know that, hey, if you're getting the assignments in on time and you're getting credit for them, then you're making pretty good progress in this class. Whereas if you're having difficulty getting the assignments in on time, um, then you might want to say, well, I need a little bit of a, a additional assistance. Uh, talk to me during office hours or whatever. All right. Here's what your grade will be made up of. Homework assignments, which constitute 65% of your grade. These will be more or less weekly assignments. All right, Not every week necessarily, but more or less weekly assignments. Pretty much five points in assignment. So out of the 15 weeks, I have scheduled about 13 assignments. You then have your project, which is in two parts, the design and the completed portion. So 15 for the design, 20 for the completed portion, and that adds up to 100 points. The 65 points, if we happen to get a little bit more or a little bit less, I'll prorate it. So in other words, if for whatever reason, maybe we have one less assignment than I'm planning and there's only 60 points. Well, I'll prorate it so it calculates out to 65 points. All right. And then from there is the standard 90 through 100 is an A, 80 to 89 is a B, and so on down the line. Here's the schedule. 
for this class. And, you know, it's not meant to be carved in stone, you know. Sometimes we get a little ahead of the readings uh, in the lecture. Sometimes we're a little bit behind them. It always works best, in my opinion, if you've done the readings prior to coming to class. That way you can, you know, get through the basic parts of the material and um, we, can, we can spend our time focusing on maybe the parts that are a little tricky or that you didn't understand initially or, or whatever. I don't think it's my responsibility to cover every page in the textbook. That would be excruciating, right? If, you, if, if that were the case, you wouldn't need either me or you wouldn't need the textbook, one of the two, right? My thought is, is that me lecturing and you having a textbook is two ways of getting the same material. And we may emphasize things a little bit differently. We may provide a different perspective or slant on them. I might provide insight that the book doesn't. The book may provide insight that I don't. And so the thought is, is that by listening to the lectures and reading the book, you'll get a better um, coverage of, of the topics as opposed to just listening to me or just reading the book. Assignments are due the Wednesday of the indicated week. Usually what happens is I will post an assignment one week and it will be due the next week. So for example, your first lab assignment is posted today, all right, and is due Wednesday of next week, all right. So every one of these, it's always assigned this week, due next week. Now next week we have a short week because it's Labor Day, which I didn't realize until, I don't know, like a day or two ago. <laughs> I didn't realize, it seems early for Labor Day, but, but what do I know? So next week is a bit of a short week. But at any rate, these are due Wednesday. Uh, and, and they're due any time on Wednesday. They're not due like by the, by the end of lab or whatever. So if you get it in 11.59 p.m., that's considered turned in on Wednesday. But truth be told, if you got it in 12.01, I probably wouldn't notice. All right. So this is what's due each week. So we have something due every week other than there's nothing due this week because Come on, I'm not that mean of a person. All right. All right, any questions about this, this stuff? All right. Okay. Let's look at a web page. Pick a web page, any web page. I want to look at that one. Not really. What should I look at? Let's look at this page. W3C.org. W3C.org is an organization that creates the languages for the web. All right. So that's that's why I picked them. It, it seemed appropriate for today. All right. But I'm less interested in the specific content, and I'm more interested in looking at this page in general terms. All right. If we look at this page, we can see any number of different stuff. All right. We can see, for example, up here is... It simply takes you to the home page. Over here, there's a list of links. We can click on them, we can go to a page. There's a little graphic over here. There's a heading here. There's another subheading here. And then there are paragraphs of text. So in general, if we're going to talk about the stuff that's typically on a web page, we can kind of summarize it. Uh, and there's other stuff too, but, but some of the main things that are on web pages is first of all, there are, there is text, typically paragraphs of text. There are headlines or headings. 
There are links to other web pages. There are lists of things. There are images. And maybe there's other multimedia. Maybe there's audio or video or animation or anything along that. We can actually see the code that makes up this web page. All right? If we're looking at this web page, we can actually see the code that makes it up simply by right mousing and saying view page source. And we can see the code that makes up this web page. So everything about this web page is simply represented as a file that contains text. All right. So let's look for something. Web design and applications involve the standards for building. Let's find that. Oh, right here. Web, does web design and applications in involve the standards for building and rendering web pages. So we can see how this text on the web page came about from this bit of code here. Let's look for a headline. Let's look for a headline of standards. Or actually, let's look for a hand, uh, the headline of this, Web Design and Applications. Oops, I just saw it. And then I moved the mouse right here. No, actually, this is it. Web Design and Applications. Now, so there's the text for the headline. There's the text for the paragraph. But if we look on the web page, the text for the paragraph and the text for the headline looks different. Right? That looks like that. That looks like that. If we were to look further on down the line, Actually, let's go back to the home page. This list looks different still. Right? We could find the text for this page, yet it's a bulleted list and not something else. How is it that the web browser displays one text looking one way and one text looking some other way? How, did, how is that accomplished? Through a tag. Through so a tag. All right. And if we look at the word HTML, which is a language of web pages, HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. And when we talk about markup or markup language, we talk about tags. So what does it mean to, to tag something or to mark it up? Well, some of you probably, how many of you highlight textbooks? Maybe not in, in, in this class or in other classes. Some of you do? Yeah. Highlight your textbook, right? What you're doing is if the instructor says on page 17, this first paragraph is very important, it's going to be on the test, what are you going to do? Well, you're going to go with your highlighter and highlight it and put some indication that that's important. So you're going to highlight it, you're going to put some kind of note next to it, or something, maybe a star, maybe an exclamation point. You're going to put some kind of indi uh, indication that that is different than the rest of the text around it. All right? Yeah, here's a paragraph, here's a paragraph, here are some words, and all, but hey, these are important words. All right? Now, if I say the opposite, if I say this paragraph here, this is outdated. We don't really need to concern ourselves with that. Well, you'll mark it up 
or tag it some other way, saying, hey, you know, that's not really important. I don't need to, to read that. We can think of web pages as being the same way. Just like here there's a bunch of text, and by us as a student marking up that text, putting little tags or little indicators in the text, we can add some meaning and we can have associate some additional meaning with that. Just like we do that in a web page, we do that via HTML tags. So this is a paragraph. This is a link. This is a heading. How do we know that? Based on the particular tags that we have associated with it. Now, I'm going to make just a simple web page, and it's not going to be a complete web page, all right? Um, simply because in the interest of time, I want to give a, an example of tags, all right, um, without going through all the other basic tags that go with the web page. So I'm going to make sort of a web page fragment that's like a web page, but it's not complete, all right, so that we see how it's done. And I'm going to do that, and I'm just going to open up Notepad to do that. I really want us in this class to really understand the code. So typically I use just a plain old simple text editor to put the code in. All right. Let's say I was making a web page about this class. All right. I may want the page to look something like this. So I might want sort of a big headline, a little bit smaller headline, and then a paragraph underneath that. All right. So let's go and create an HTML file. How do we do that? Well, I open up my text editor like Notepad, and I'm going to put this text into my text editor. And we're going to see what's going to happen. So I'll put in CISS 2.16. Introduction to Web Development. And then I'll say, see, you know, I'll write the paragraph in CISS 216. Students learn about HTML and CSS. They create web pages and websites um, this class is offered on campus and online all right that's enough of a paragraph i'm going to now go and save that now i want this to be treated like a web page so i have to save it in a special way I have to save it with a .html extension when I go to save it. So I'm going to go up here, I'm going to say File, Save, and I'm going to, and right now, Notepad wants to save it with a .txt extension. I'm going to go instead, and I'll save it on the desktop, I'm going to change it, and I'm going to save it as dot html <coughs> now if we look that's how I know I did it right right because that is the symbol for uh, the Chrome browser which indicates that Windows recognizes and knows that this is a web page all right because I saved it with a dot html attribute Let's open this up in the browser. 
We're going to look at this class two. Uh, we're, going to, uh, we're going to look at uh, web pages two ways in this class. We're going to look at sort of the inside of the web pages, the code of the web pages. That's the nuts and bolts. We're also going to look at the web page in a browser. That's how people are going to be viewing our web pages. All right. In other words, when you go and open up and go to a website. you are viewing that website through a browser. So you're seeing it the way that it was intended to be displayed. This is sort of the surface of it. But we saw a second ago that we can go view source and we can see sort of the innards of it. All right. We're going to do the same thing in this class. We're going to use Notepad to see the insides of our web page. And then we're going to, to use the browser to view the web page the way other people will say it. So if I double click on this, it will open it up in the browser. And if you notice, this doesn't look anything at all like I wanted it to. <laughs> all right? Wow. Off to a bad start, right? Why doesn't it look anything at all like the way I wanted it to? I didn't put any tags in. It's just a blob of undifferentiated text. I haven't explained to the browser what each thing is. Just like as a student, you explain to yourself what different pieces of your textbook means by marking it up and by putting indications here. So I haven't put any tags in here. I haven't said that that top line, I want to be a biggest headline. And the second line, I want to be a sort of a secondary headline. And the third group of stuff, I want to be a paragraph. I haven't tagged it. So, how do we tag it? We tag it using this mechanism. And I'm going to put the tags in, then we're going to stop and talk about them for a second. Do keep in mind that today, I'm just coming up with a fragment of a web page. All right. There's other tags that, that are used in addition to these. And we'll cover those on Wednesday. All right. Very good. Glad, glad someone's paying attention. All right. So what can we observe about these tags? First thing we can observe is that tags are put within these angle brackets or the less than, greater than sign in, from mathematics. So that's the first thing that we can observe. So we have something inside of that that's not text that's going to appear on the page, but that's something about the text. That's extra information about the text, extra meaning for the text. So, not only is this the word CISS216, we've defined that there's something special about this. And the H1 means that it's a top level heading. All right, a top level heading. The H2 means it's sort of a secondary heading. So think of like an outline in school. Out in school, you might have, you know, uh, you know, the top level heading of your paper, you know, um, the, the United States. And then you might have secondary headings for different regions, you know, New England, the Southeast, the Mid-Atlantic, and so on down the line. And then underneath each of those, you might have sub-levels further. Underneath New England, you might have Maine, and Vermont, New Hampshire, and so on. Same idea here. Each of these H1s, H2s, represents sort of a different level on that outline. So H1 means it's a top level heading. H2 means it's a secondary level heading. And finally, a P means it's an, just a plain old ordinary paragraph. Now, second thing I want you to notice about these tags is that they come in pairs. All right? H1. <coughs> Slash H1. And so the student uh, that mentioned that, that I initially forgot the slash here was very observant. This is a start tag. This is an end tag. And what's the difference between the two? Well, 
that flash at the beginning. That simply tells the browser where that tag ends. So in other words, at this point I say, hey, I have a top level heading. But where does that end? You know, is, a whole, is all this text the top level heading? Is just the CISS part the top level heading? No. The whole word CISS 216 is the top level heading. And that's where the heading ends, where I put the slash H1. All right. So, tags come in pairs, and everything between the start and end tag gets treated a special way by the browser. What special way? Well, it depends on the particular tag. So, H1, that means it's a top level heading, it's going to be the biggest heading on the page. H2, Secondary heading, it's going to be second biggest heading on the page. Finally, a paragraph, <coughs> simply going to be a plain paragraph of text. Now, let's go and save this. And open it up in the browser. Now it looks like I wanted it to. Why? Because the browser looks at those tags and now it understands that CISS 216 is meant to be a heading. So it makes that big. Introduction to web development is sort of a secondary heading. So it makes that a little bit smaller. And finally, that little paragraph I have describing the class is just a plain old paragraph. So it just makes it plain old text. So the question of HTML is learning all the tags that you need to do everything that you want to do. So we saw tags for headings, tags for paragraphs. We're going to learn tags for links. We're going to learn tags for lists of items. We're going to learn tags for images. Anything that you put on a web page is done via a tag. It's a language where we mark up our text to tell the browser what each little piece of that text actually means. All right. So, next time what we'll do is we'll go back and sort of learn the basic parts of the web page that I sort of skipped in this example. Remember I said this is sort of a fragment of a web page. Your first assignment for this class will be to Research these following topics on the web, HTML, HTML5, and CSS. Then you'll create a web page that has an article that you have written about each of the topics, summarizing what you've learned. Each tag should contain at least one well-written paragraph. So, if we're going to look at it, your page might look something like this. sort of a top level heading, topics in web development, a secondary heading for HTML, then a paragraph about it based on what you've learned, then secondary heading for HTML5, a paragraph about it, finally secondary heading for CSS and a paragraph about that. So if you're, I would encourage you to experiment with the tags that we've talked about today to read through the book and see any other tags that are mentioned in the first chapters of the book. At the very least, you can do some research concerning what these topics are. So even if you're not really comfortable with creating a web page, which I would encourage you to try, you know, in lab. I'm there to give you a hand if you run into difficulties. But you can at least do the research and start reading up on these different topics. All right, we'll see you over in lab.